Hey everyone, my name is Lori Forster and I work for the Cherokee County Water and Sewage Authority. Today we're here to learn about macroinvertebrates and specifically um, about caddisflies. We're going to do that with this great little book called The Secret Life of Streams by Linnell Marie Garfield. She is a hydrologist and she did a fantastic job of writing this book so that we could learn about macroinvertebrates. Hey you. Yes you. Hi there. My name is Laurel the, Ma the, Laurel the Mayfly. I know you think that you're dreaming right now, but you're not. It's okay. Don't be shy. I'm perfectly harmless. I just want to be friends, and I've got some great secrets to share with you. Like what? Well, for starters, what if I told you there are creatures living near your house that are so odd that they seem like underwater aliens? And what if I told you I could introduce you to them? I can, because they are my friends. There are lots of strange but friendly creatures right here in your neighborhood stream. And I bet you don't even know we're here. We live beneath the surface. You could say we are undercover. Any day now, I'll be leaving my underwater home. My wing pads are getting bigger and bigger and my auntie Madge so soon they will turn into wings, and I will hatch out of the water. While I'm still here, I want to introduce you to my neighborhood friends here in Small Creek. Then, when I grow my wings and can fly, you can introduce me to your human friends in the above water world. Is it a deal? Okay then, come underwater with me. I live right here in Small Creek, just beyond your house. You've probably never seen a mayfly kid before, huh? That's funny because I see humans at the edge of the watery world all the time. This is the first time I've talked to one, though. Um, I'm so tiny and you are so big, but I bet you could still have lots, we could still have lots of fun together. I have some great friends I can't wait to share my world with you. I have lived in this creek my whole life and I am excited to leave my home and try something new. After I hatch into the air, I get to use my new wings and explore the above water world. Still, I'm a little nervous about to leaving my about leaving my wonderful friends and family here in Small Creek. I'm excited to go live in a strange new place, but it will be weird. Almost as weird as if you would suddenly live beneath the water. I can see you are puzzled. Let me tell let me tell you my life story. First, my mom laid eggs, many tiny eggs, in the edge of Small Creek. One of those was me. All of us eggs fell to the fell into the water and sank to the bottom of the creek. Nestled in the rocks at the bottom, we grew and in, grew inside the egg and hatched into the water. I crawled out of my egg as a tiny nymph or larva. I was a young mayfly with legs but no wings. A cute little wormy bug. I grew in, in Small Creek for nearly two years, getting bigger and shedding my skin as, as it got too small. This is me now as a mayfly nymph. When it gets to be the time for me to hatch, my wings my wing pads will be dark and a little bigger. When they break open, I will have to leave the bottom of the creek where I feel safe and rise up to the surface. There I will sit on top of the water, unfurl my shiny new wings, and dry them out, fanning them slowly. After I dry, I will fly away, heading upstream to lay my own eggs at the, ed at the water's edge. The, life cycle, the cycle of life will begin all over again. This is my home, Small Creek. Like I said, I live here with my whole family. There are a lot of things about water dwellers that might surprise you. I bet you didn't even know mayflies like to nibble on blackberries. Twice now I've seen the leaves turn yellow and red and even and the blackberries hang over the edge of the creek. 
They are fat and juicy and, the, and drop into the water. Yum. Our worlds are connected in more than what, more ways than you might know. For instance, when you and your friends were building a rock bridge across the stream last summer, you may not have thought about the fact that you were cutting off my neighborhood. I couldn't swim down to see my friends until the water filled up our creek and overflowed those rocks. You see, we are here even if we are too small for you to see. Like I said, we are all connected even if we are very different. We do affect each other in many, many ways. You and me, we share water, air, and sunlight. I hope we can be friends, and I hope we can help each other because your world up there is so beautiful, and so is ours. We don't live in houses down here. The water of Small Creek is our home. We all live near each other in this neighborhood, no matter what we look like. Even though we like very different places to live, we still watch out for each other and hang out together. We are just like a big, diverse, weird family. Big because we are there are lots of us. Diverse because we are so different. Weird because, well, you'll see. If you listen to what stream bugs have to tell you, we will tell you we will tell you the story of the stream. Everything is not always as it seems. I may kind of fly, may fly, but I've lived my entire life underwater, not flying anywhere. Aunt Midge told me once flies hatch and leave the water. We never look back. Most of us in this stream are like human teenagers, waiting to get our license to fly. Whether you are a human child or a mayfly in Small Creek, breathing air is an important part of life. You may not think that we need to breathe air because we're underwater, but we do. Some of us, some of us have gills to help us breathe oxygen in the water. See, mine are along the edge of my belly. It's important for us to have clean water to live in. Clean water carries oxygen to us under underwater, but dirty water cannot. Some of this, some of us can handle living in mucky water and do well there. However, those of us who are sensitive stream bugs absolutely need clean water. If clean water becomes dirty, we sensitive may just leave. Now we're going to switch over to talking about some of specific caddisfly friends that she has. My friend Rocky is a stone case building caddisfly. The word caddis means case, and Rocky's case looks like a homemade sleeping bag made of pebbles. The only way Rocky will ever climb out of his case is if he, grows, if he outgrows it. He has big hooks on his rear end that hold the case onto him tightly. This way he drags it with him as he crawls around the shallows basking in the warm sun. Rocky says his case protects him from the big bad voodoo trout who love to eat stream bugs like us. Rocky can't outrun the big fish so he's, his sleeping bag is the next best thing to protect him. He just pulls his legs and head inside until trouble passes. After all, fish don't like to eat rocks. Rocky's pebble case is heavy enough that it helps him stay on the bottom of the creek where the algae grows. Like, um, like Alpo and Diana, he is really hooked on algae. He even has the same big teeth 
as the twins for scraping algae off the rocks. Rocky's favorite place is on the big rocks in the sun um, at the slow edges of the creek. This is where he finds the tastiest algae. Unlike Alpo and Diana, Rocky wouldn't be able to hang out in the fast water because his body isn't flattened like theirs. Rocky moves slowly and always seems to be about the same place. I would love to bring him on some of my adventures, but he's just way too slow for me. One of my favorite bugs to swim with is Rocky's cousin, Cassidy. She is a caddisfly too, but she doesn't have a sleeping bag like Rocky. Instead, she's a free-swimming caddisfly, a little green worm with arms and no case. Cassidy and Rocky look different. Some look so different. Sometimes I wonder if they're really cousins. Since Cassie doesn't stick all those rocks on her body, she isn't weighed down on the bottom of the creek like Rocky is. She crawls around the stream rocks um, on the bottom to find food. And when she loses her footing, she curls up in a little ball and tumbles downstream with the current. Cassie does a good job of hiding from the big, bad voodoo trout. With her pretty green camouflage, she is below me in a leaf, leafy brown green water. She can easily be um, she can easily be see see because of the green light. But when I look up at, at her from the bottom of the creek where the trout live. The glistening water and reflections of the trees and the clouds make her nearly invisible. I love to watch her move from the deeper water onto the surface. She makes funny faces as she puffs up her belly with air and rises to the top. I tell her, hey, watch out for the big, big bad voodoo trout. She leisurely giggles, winks, winks at me from above, and tumbles into the water like a balloon until she can grab hold of another rock. Another caddisfly is her cousin Nettie, a net spinning caddisfly who lives um, in, down in the mud around the dam. Nettie doesn't have a case, instead lives inside a net that she has spun. The net catches food, from, food for her while she just relaxes in the muddy water. There are lots of other others like her in the stream. I think that's because there's lots of mud that spills through the dam. Nettie has figured out how to live well in the mud. Nettie lives inside the crack of an old log downstream from our neighborhood and has spun her net right on the side of the log. She hangs out on in the crack and last I heard she has spun another net just a little ways from her main one. She eats whatever goodies get stuck in her net. Her net looks like looks strong enough that she could almost catch small fish, if only it was a little bit bigger. We'd show you those we'd show those trout once and for all. We all love to visit Nettie to see what she gets caught in her net. It's always something different. Since Nettie lives in the muddy part of the creek and cannot move around like me, she needs needs to grow a different way to breathe underwater. I can swim around and find cleaner water if it gets too muddy for my taste. Nettie can't swim away, so she has hairy little gills along the edges of her body which she waves around and vibrates while she's inside the net. Doing this actually creates a current and brings in more oxygen for her to breathe the rhythm also draws floating food into her net, which is great for her. I told her she should try belly dancing next. She'd be great. And then we're going to step, skip kind of towards the end of the book. Now that you've had a glimpse into our secret world, though I won't be able to go back and forth through the world,
world once I sprout my wings, you still can. I've shown you who to look for, and you can come out to the creek behind one of the houses and explore whenever you like. I know you've seen the bushes around the creek, even though it's pretty overgrown. To find us, just come out to the creek and turn over rocks and stir up the gravel to visit the, the bug kids in, our, in your creek. Like you've seen, we hide under the water, so you may need to look hard, maybe even dig below the rocks to find us. By now, you've probably understood why we hide from, the bull, from bullies. For us, the bullies are the birds, the house cats, and the pesky trout. We try to stay out of sight of the hungry creatures. Now that I have met, now that you've met my friends, once I hatch out, I, I can't wait to see your world and meet your friends. I'll need some new friends above the water. Until then, come out and play in Small Creek. So this is a great book that we're put um, to kind of learn about um, different types of macrovertebrates. So let's talk about caddisflies. Caddisflies have multiple different types of cases. So you have the ones that are made of rocks that are smoother. Um, you have ones that are made of leaves that are all, it's twisted up. You have um, the ones that are not as pretty with sticks and leaves and that type of thing. Some of them have, um, they're called stick backs where they have, it looks like a square pattern, but then you have some things sticking out of there. So here's some examples. We have the ones that are made with leaves right here. Then we have the one that's rocks, it's kind of smooth, and these are more in sticks and the rock combinations. This one is kind of a rectangular square pattern. And this one up here is shells. So depending on where these caddisflies live, they use whatever they have around them to make their cases. So it's pretty cool what um, caddisflies do and how they protect themselves. And there are multiple different types of caddisflies. We're going to, these are all the case builders. And as you've heard from the story, there's multiple other caddisflies that don't build cases. But for our activity today, we're going to take a picture of a caddisfly. And you can, uh, I suggest you print one on my cardstock. Uh, it will hold up a little bit better when you do your picture. And then go outside and gather your materials. Just like caddisflies, they build their cases with stuff that's in their environment. So we have our rocks. We have our, this is just little pieces of mulch. We have, this is grass. These are leaves that I found off a tree, and so are these little different smaller leaves. And then we have our dandelion flowers and our clovers. This was off of a, thought this is interesting, this was off of a tree that was in the front yard. And then we have the little tiny, pretty little flowers, and then this is a stick that was on the ground, and I just broke it up in little pieces. And so what you can do with something like that is you go from this, using these materials, you create something like this. So it makes a case all the way around itself to protect its body. And so I encourage you to get outside, collect your materials, make sure that what you're picking up is safe, make sure you're not getting into your parents' flower bed and picking their favorite flowers. Um, but yeah, find just all you have to do is find stuff on the ground and glue it on and you have your own case making caddis fly. So I hope that you read the entire book, uh, Secret Life of Streams, and learn about, uh, she talks about dragonflies and stoneflies and all kinds of really other, cool, other really cool creatures that live in the stream. Thank you very much. Hope you guys have a great day.